I was recently listening to an episode of This American Life, the popular radio show and podcast, and in it, they described a particularly astounding piece of research that had been published in the journal Science. In that research, two political scientists, Michael LeCur and Donald Green, sent thousands of surveys to people to gauge their opinions on a variety of topics. And one of the things that they were particularly interested in were the people's opinions on gay marriage. The researchers then asked the uh, university's LGBT society to send canvassers out to the homes of the people who had received the surveys and then have simple 20-minute conversations with them about the topic of gay marriage. The results were astonishing. They found that after these 20-minute conversations, they were very likely to change the minds of the people who previously were against gay marriage. And even further, they discovered that these opinions stayed changed for up to a year after. It turns out that that data was probably too incredible to be true, because two other researchers, David Brookman and Joshua Kala, recently tried to replicate that study, and they ran into a number of problems. For one, they found that the data was just too perfect. There weren't any uh, outliers when it came to the survey respondents, which is really rare to find, especially in a case where you have thousands of people participating. All of the answers fell right in line with what the end conclusion was. The other red flag is that Brookman and Kala weren't getting the response rate that the other team claimed to be getting. So they researched the matter and tried to figure out which survey company the other team used. And the most likely one, they called them up and found that that company had never heard from the other team. And more than that, the techniques the other team described using were not within their capability to even do. And now LeCur, the lead author on the first study, is claiming that he did not actually pay the people that he surveyed as he had promised, but he says that the data is real and he'll reveal it at some future date. The other author, Green, said he was alarmed by what the other team found, and so he asked LeCur for the raw data, but he hasn't gotten it yet. And in the meanwhile, he's asked science to retract the paper. Outlets are reporting on this as being a case of a truly next-level fraud. And by all accounts, it seems like that might be true, considering that LeCur had some very detailed responses from these supposed surveys that he sent out. And also, if this is true, he wasted thousands of man hours when it comes to the LGBT group that actually did go door to door as they were asked. But this is also the story of a very serious problem with scientific research publishing. Green is a co-author, and as such, he deserves to take some of the blame. In fact, he's the principal investigator. LeCur is just a grad student, and he shouldn't have to ask LeCur for the raw data. A good PI should already have access to the raw data to guard against something exactly like this happening. So keep this incident in mind the next time you're arguing with someone about the benefits of scientific research. Yes, it's incredibly important, and at the same time, it's very flawed because humans are involved every step of the way. And humans can be lazy and, yes, sometimes dishonest. For more examples, check out Retraction Watch at retractionwatch.com. And kudos to This American Life for actually going back and correcting the record. Not all media outlets will do that. And keep in mind next time that scientific truth is not just about one single unreplicated study, no matter how interesting the results might be.